Hello everybody, Arkno here, getting back to more Let's Play Trails in the Sky, second chapter. The last we left off, we <clears throat> did various explorations and whatnot. To do some racer guild business. <clears throat> I also did some off-screen grinding, not for levels, but for some seatments so I could at least open up and up or upgrade all of my stealth slots. And later on I'll upgrade Agon slots as well. I also got a new weapon for Estelle. They dropped off a panda enemy. <clears throat> the, um, they dropped off this enemy and they gave a crap ton of experience as well. <clears throat> this enemy says it spawns on the Vista Forest Road, but it doesn't spawn on the map. It only spawns in battle <clears throat> with other enemies. Rarely is that. <clears throat> and he murders people. <coughs> <God> damn. <coughs> Holy crap. <coughs> <coughs> oh my goodness. So on this episode, we're gonna go do I found out where the Mr. Road Monster is. <coughs> The way I was spawning in the panda <clears throat> was basically start a battle with these guys. And if no panda spawns, <clears throat> just the map right where you came in at. And uh gates them again with the pretty <clears> head. <throat> so I can't believe my dumb ass didn't see him. Uh, there's the Mr. Roadmaster that was before. Let me get straight. And with those levels, I also got Agate. He got a new crab that blasts him. Oh, you losers, I'm immune to
Okay, this is a surprise. They managed to turn that black stain on the ground into this that quick? I think they built the building the same way, just, uh, newer? <clears throat> I thank the goddess, this is so wonderful. Estelle? Matron Teresa! <clears throat> yes, I thought it was you. Welcome back, I'm glad to see you. Oh, and you are Agate, yes? That's right, been a while, ma'am. We last met during that mess with Clem, yes? It really has been a while. Thank you so much for your help back then. Hey, don't sweat it, really. I'm just sorry I haven't stopped by since then. Um, congratulations on getting the orphanage rebuilt. <clears throat> I'm amazed. It looks pretty much exactly how it used to be, too. <laughs> I know it sounds silly to ask them to build it the, that way, but everyone was kind enough to humor me. I can't imagine this orphanage looking any other way. It just wouldn't be the same. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. So are the kids inside? Ah, uh, no, they're actually out in Minoria for class. A traveling priest comes by once a week and holds Sunday school for us, you see. Okay, that's a bit of a problem, though. <clears throat> you see, we wanted to ask the kids about something on top of just saying hello. Oh? Will this have to do with the white man Polly saw? Ah, uh, probably, yes. I see, so it was Polly who saw the person thing. I always did peg her as a sharp one. Well, come inside. You can wait here until they return. I do have some tea on the kettle, and a few snacks, too. Thanks. What's up? Tea not your thing? Major Teresa. <clears throat> You're not going to ask about Joshua, are you? Ah, uh, Chloe already told me everything. <clears throat> she worries easily, and she needed to unburden her soul onto someone when she found out. Estelle, you've been through so much. I... <laughs> Come on. If you say things like that, I... I can't hold it in. You don't need to hold it in. You shouldn't. <clears throat> I'm all too familiar with how it feels to do something important. <clears throat> now, now, don't say anything. I may not be able to be a mother for you, but... At the very least, I can hold you for a little while. Oh. <clears throat> well, that was embarrassing. And here I was wanting to show up and show how big and... How I'm a big, tough bracer woman now. That's right. You are a senior bracer now, aren't you? Congratulations, Estelle. <laughs> um, well, I'm still kind of green, to be honest. Speaking of my little crying jag, though, Teresa, you mentioned that Chloe was worried about us? Yes, about you and Joshua specifically. She saw her precious friends suffering and felt powerless to do anything for them. She struggled with it. She desperately wants to help you. Precious friends. <laughs> I feel kind of awful. She's been tearing herself up so much over it, but I'm glad she cares. I really need to go see her soon. I believe the Genesis campus is closed to visitors right now due to the end of term examinations. Those should be over soon, though. You can see her then. <clears throat> Sounds like a plan. Also, you know, the kids are a little bit late, aren't they? I don't remember Sunday school taking this long. <clears throat> they may be playing in the village after class. The new traveling priest who's been coming by does seem like he's fond of children. The new traveling priest, huh? Wait, why does that sound familiar? We should head over, head over to Minoria to check on him then. We'll bring the kids back if need be. Good idea. Are you sure? I wouldn't want to trouble you. Haha, <laughs> no problem. Think of it as thanks for the great tea and snacks. Besides, you are a big one for letting you cry like that, right? Hey. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll be waiting here for your return. Alright, uh, let's go to Yonder Village. Yonder Village Place. To go get the kids from Sunday school. <clears throat> Major still blows me away. I was impressed with her before, but man, I can't help but feel humbled by women like that, you know? The queen's the same way. Haha, <laughs> you too, huh, Aggie? Yeah, she kind of reminds me of mom that way. Oh yeah, the old man's wife. She died during the war, didn't she? Uh, Aggie? Something wrong? Nah, just women are strong, you know? Stronger than you think. What's this all of a sudden? Ah, uh, let it go. I'm rambling. Come on, let's go collect the kids from Doria. And Doria, to collect the kids we shall. I haven't been here since that whole stolen donations thing. Still quiet as the church, it looks like. Hey, nothing wrong with that. I like it. Your hometown of Ravenhue was pretty quiet, too, if I remember right. 
I guess. Anyway, kids should be at Sunday school somewhere in the village. Let's look for them. Right. <clears throat> if I had to take a guess. Sunday school wouldn't be held in here, would it? Oh, what? Sunday school, class in session. <clears throat> oh, hey, here's the Sunday school. Given that the sign's still up, I guess they're still in class. Could be. Let's take a look inside. They might have finished for the day and just forgot to take down the sign, too. Good idea. Let's, let me take a peek. Okay, let's see. Wait a sec. I know that guy. He's Kevin! They do not deserve your sympathy. In truth, Pedro did not think Duke guessed it would back down so easily. And one of the machinations that foul-masked puppeteer Harlequin. Capri, Pedro's teacher, seemed to know the jester, but simply dodged any questions about him with frustrating vagueness. Regardless, Pedro knew another battle would come, and soon. He would have to upgrade the Blue Knight if he'd hoped to emerge victorious. Oh, Pedro. A slightly irritated yet comforting voice snapped Pedro from his reverie. Do you wish for your tea to grow cold? The clear blue eyes which met his own carried their own message. It will be all right. Pedro, a little embarrassed, took his tea and drank deeply. It was enough to simply have this moment with her. The end. That's the doll night, kids. What? That's it? <clears throat> but what about the fight with Harlequin? Oh, Clem, you're such a dummy. That's a wonderful ending. And you just know Pedro and Tia go on to get married and live happily ever after. Ah, uh, so romantic. Yeah, yeah. They gotta get married and be happy. I want some of that tea. Capri is so cool. <gasps> All 22 chapters of the Doll Knight in one city for a bunch of rambunctious kids? You wanna talk challenges? Alright, kiddos. That's enough for one day. Class is over. Aww. Thank you for teaching us, Mr. Graham. Okay, never underestimating this group of kids again. Yo, who's at the door? Class just wrapped up, so come on in. Haha, <laughs> you noticed me? Guess I stuck my nose in a little too far. Sorry for intruding. Uh, hey! What? Estelle! Hi, kids. It's great to see you again. Are you guys doing okay? Holy moly, did you come to play? This is great. It's been forever. Miss Estelle, play with me. Me! Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> well, you haven't lost any energy, it seems. And, Father Kevin, it's been a while. Ah, she remembers me. Of course I do. Wow, though, you really are a priest, despite that getup. Really, why all the hate on my awesome duds? Yeah, no kidding. His duds are freaking great. But hey, what are the chances we meet again here of all places? Could this be fate? Nah, it's work. Ah, I see. So you've met Father Kevin before, Estelle? The world really is a small place. I know, right? Craziness. Thanks for lunch, by the way. It was excellent. No, no, it's no trouble. Besides, it's the least I can do in return for what you've done for the children. Hey, Estelle. How come Josh was not with you today? Ah, uh, you see, he's pretty busy with something, so he couldn't come today. Aw, too bad. Aw, I wanted to, I want Joshua to see the orphanage all fixed up, too. Me, too. I wanted to see him dressed up like a princess again. So pretty. <laughs> anyway, you guys were in Sunday school for a while. What was that you were reading when we came in? Some kind of novel? <laughs> it's called The Doll Knight. It's an awesome action story about fights between puppeteers. Oh, no, it wasn't Swords for Brains. It was a romance with desperate love between a noble lady and a common man. Mmm, desperate love. It's a young adult novel series I brought with me when I came to Liberal. I'd planned on reading it to the kids a little at a time, but they, uh, convinced me to do it all in one go. Woo! <laughs> I guess the way you get caught up in stuff kind of backfired there. Well, thank you for your devotion, Father Kevin. You'll be heading back to Ruan now, I take it? Yeah, next logical stop, really. I've got other villages. I got. Yeah, I've got other villages to visit, so I need to hop on an airship soon. Speaking of, how come you're in Ruan yourself, Estelle? Brace your business, I guess? Yeah, there's a lot going on. Wait, on that note, we came out here to ask about something, um. I believe you wanted to ask about the white man Polly saw? Oh, yeah, that thing. Hmm, you wanna ask me stuff? Yes, Polly, we have a question. Can you tell us about the white man you saw a little while ago? The white man was a white man. He was spinning like a top and was neat and fun. 
or we were hoping for a bit more. Um, let me try to explain a bit better. It was about four days ago. Polly was outside, just kind of spacing out, which is, you know, usual for her. And then she saw a white man floating in the air. Yeah. <clears throat> he was dancing around in circles in the sky. And when I tried talking to him, he bowed and flew away like a birdie. Oh, that settles it. I am 99% sure I know who they're talking about. You were totally asleep and dreamed up the whole thing. I mean, come on, that is the lamest ghost story ever. I thought she might be dreaming at first as well, but it seems someone else saw it too. Right, Daniel? Um, yeah, I saw only a little, though. That night I saw a weird white shadow flying off to the east. White shadow, okay. Well, two kids seeing it, I'm a lot more inclined to believe it. Hell's up with just bowing when spoken to, though. Hey, Polly, did you get a good look at his face? I don't know what his face looks like. He was wearing a weird mask. Oh, I am 100% sure I know who it is now. A mask? What the hell kind of a ghost wears a mask? Hey, Polly, you need to say this stuff. You never mentioned that before, but nobody asked. That is true. Well, masks aside, it seems it wasn't just a dream. Once Daniel told me about it, I contacted the Bracer Kill, just in case. We've been watching for it ever since, but there's been no sign of it. Hmm. Well, thanks for your time, ma'am. This gives us a lot to think about. Estelle, Agate, whenever you're in Ruan, you're more than welcome to stop by. Father, I'll see you next time there's a class, I hope. Yeah, you bet. Absolutely. I'll drop by every time I have a chance. See ya, Father Kevin. You too, Estelle. And bring Joshua next time, too. Yeah. I don't know when I'll be back, but we will come see you again. I'm bad back to run for a bit. What about you guys? Want to come with? Well, we've asked everything we need to over here. And the road's always better with company. Let's head out. We've decided then. Off we go to Ruan. Let's go. Nice. Father Kevin. Actually looks kind of freaking baller.
finally back. Feels good to be in the again. Thanks, guys. It was nice of you to make sure I got back here safely. <laughs> oh, come on. You don't need to thank us. Yeah, besides, like, you really need the help anyway. That bow gun of yours was an antique, but you're pretty good with it. Don't lie. What? Oh, no. A wandering priest spends a lot of time out in the wilderness, you know? You gotta be able to defend myself somehow, but there's no way I can match you, bro. You really think so? I think you'd make a really good racer, actually. You're really skilled. Oh, Estelle, you're making me blush. Keep the flattery up, we might have to go. We might have to get serious. I thought we agreed to knock it off, but come on. <laughs> anyway, about the spooker hunt. People are coming to the local church bar, too. But, uh, Father Theodore thinks we ain't dealing with the normal spirit here, assuming it is a spirit at all. Really? Why is it normal? Well, the church likes to say that when people die, all the good little boys and girls join Hades in the sky, right? Right. And sinners are condemned to fall into the darkness of Gehenna. Sometimes, though, you get souls who don't really fall into either of you. That's what the church typically refers to as a ghost. Yeah, wandering souls, oh, okay. But then I still don't get what makes our ghost not normal if it's wandering souls. Well, they don't really wander. According to doctrine, ghosts are usually bound with something. Could be a place, could be a person, point is, it's something. The ghost everyone's been reporting, although doesn't seem to behave that way. Got Father Theodore worried, I'll tell you that much. Now I get it. Yeah, that's worry. Anyway, just something to keep in mind as you investigate. Now I gotta get to the church. See ya, gang. Stay cool and spookless. It's spookless, I shall stay. Well, that was really good advice. I guess he does really know the best advice. He still doesn't seem like much of a priest, though. Ah, don't say too much. The wanderers really are a bunch of weirdos. The guy who used to come to Ravenue way back when was real bold and nuts too. Okay. Yeah, we still do have some people we need to talk to. Let's continue our investigation. After you? Aww. Some gentleman. Who are you? What the hell have you done with Aggie? Knock it off with the it nonsense. Just say it's a ghost or whatever already. No, no, not hearing anything. La la la. Can a girl lie to herself every now and then? No. And the door is closed. Hey, welcome to Erlitton Checkpoint. There aren't many tourists at the moment, so you can take your time and really appreciate it. Back there, he was half asleep at his post and thought he saw something made a huge fuss. And I gotta do something about this. Hey, welcome. This is Logic Sleep for Traffic. If you'd like to say thanks, just give me the word. Is it free? It's not free. Break. 
Razor can tell what to do. Haha, <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm surprised you remember that. Of course, things wouldn't have gone half as smoothly without you. Well, what can we do for you today? Well, sir, we're here without we're here about a soldier who claims to have seen a white shadow. What? Even the guilds heard about that? For the love of This is ridiculous. You should be ashamed, honestly. Ashamed? What do you mean? There wasn't any ghost, he was just daydreaming. Drifting off the way he did could be disastrous if there was an actual emergency. As his commanding officer, his actions are wholly my responsibility. How embarrassing. I think you're getting a bit ahead of yourself, sir. That thing, whatever it is, has apparently been seen all over the region. What? Are you? I sent the company explain the investigation to Chief Warren, Officer Han. I... I see. Goodness, I thought he was simply half asleep, but perhaps I did jump to conclusions too quickly. I've been far too hard on Nix in that case. So Nix is the one who saw the White Shadow? That's right. He's currently on duty at the entrance to the Caldea Tunnel. You should go speak with him directly. Tell him he has my permission to speak to you. Thank you, sir. Oh, there. You want to head into the tunnel? Give me just a minute and I'll open the gate. Ah, uh, no. We're not here for the tunnel. We're from the Bracer Guild. And we're here for you, actually. Can we ask you about the White Shadow you saw? Hang on, you mean, that was just something I dreamed up when I was half asleep. Actually, it was a lot of people across the room on it. And according to your commanding officer, neither you nor he knew. He said sorry for his earlier comments and said you could talk really about it. So it was real. I knew it was too real to be a dream. This makes me feel a bit better, honestly. Though if that thing was real, it's actually kind of a little chilly. Trust me, I know what you mean. Anyway, can you tell us about what you saw? In as much detail as you can, Sure. It was three nights ago. I was standing here on my watch. You know how loud the waterfall is, right? You get used to it after a while, and that's really like a really old you sleep. Plus, I just started my shift and come from a mess, so I was even more asleep. So to keep falling asleep, I walked back and forth around here. That's when I saw it. I see. What was it, exactly? A floating man dressed in white, old-fashioned clothes. He, or it was, he, or it, was dancing just above the waterfall. I freaked out so bad, I pointed my rifle at it. Without thinking again. What? You shot the, the thing? Yeah, I meant it as a warning shot, but I was so nervous I hit it right in the chest. Or I know I did, but it just floated there, so nothing had happened at all. After that, it took off like a bird or something. Heading north. You in a gunfire too? That's just swell. After all that, I ran inside and the commander, of course. But all that got me was a dressing down for sleeping on the job and unnecessary rifle discharge. Man, that was a bad day. I can't um, imagine. Well, anyway, it's clearly for the best. Just pretend it was a dream and forget it never happened. Yep. Thanks for the thought, but I doubt it'll ever be able to do that. I don't know why that poor soul is a wandering ghost, but try to help him, yeah? I mean, braces can solve problems with the dead, too, right? Heck no! I'm no priest! But there has to be a reason it's showing up, yeah? We need to figure out what the reason is. Good luck, then. Wow, incredible! Papa, Mama, come here! Now, now, slow down on your trip, pumpkin. It really is lovely. I'm glad we could come with you, my love. Thank you. No, I've always left you two alone back home. This is the least I can do for my family. Oh. Oh, that's a really sweet family. Looks like they're on vacation or something. Looks like, yeah. They might have been, they might even be foreigners. It's so amazing! looking at it, I feel like it's going to swallow me whole. Excuse me, miss? Do you know the name of this waterfall? Where does all this water come from? Uh, that's a little out of the blue. Um, well, the waterfall is called Air Latin. The water flows here from Valeria Lake through an ancient waterway. Oh, I know what Valeria Lake is. It's the big lake we saw before the airship landed, right? Yes, that's right, but airship? Are you from another country? Yep, that's right. I'm from far, far away. By the way, my name's Ren. Ren, huh? That's a really cute name. <laughs> I know. Papa and Mama gave it to me. Of course it'd be cute. Ren, don't bother the nice lady too much. <laughs> Our apologies if I ran into trouble. Oh, I wasn't doing anything bad. No, no, it's no trouble. Hope you don't mind me prying, but what brings you to Libero, folks? Well, I often come to Libero for business. Every time I do, I'm struck by the beauty of this country, so... So this time, you brought myself and our daughter along. Miracles do happen, it seems. Heh, <laughs> you 
You guys are like the most picture perfect family, you know? <laughs> Jealous? Pop was away a lot, but he always brings us lots of presents when he comes home. And Mom is always full of smiles and makes the best food. Really? I am kind of jealous now, actually. Yeah, <laughs> goodness. I'm sorry, she's still very much a child. Hey, what's yours, miss? What's your name? Oh, yeah, sorry, I haven't introduced myself. I'm Estelle. Estelle Bright. I'm a bracer. Er, wait, do you know what a bracer is? Hey, I'm not stupid. I'm a big girl. But that's neat. You're a bracer, huh? Do you slay lots of scary monsters? Yup, that's part of the job sometimes. A bracer? That's very impressive. Yes, especially at your age. <laughs> I'm still pretty new at it, though. There, there are guild branches in every major city in the world. If you folks encounter any trouble during your trip, you can count on us. Thank you. We'll keep that in mind. If you'll pardon us, though, we need to check into the inn. Come along now, Ren. Oh, I want to talk to Miss Estelle more. Hey, Miss Estelle, will you play with me next time we meet? Sure. <laughs> Yay! See you, Miss Estelle. Pretty energetic little sprout, huh? A bit younger than Tina, even, I think. Yeah, she might be. What, they remind you of your old man? <laughs> just a bit, yeah. I was thinking about how I was around her age with Joshua when I first met. Ah, I see. Anyway, we've shaken down all our witnesses. Shall we get back to John? Sure. That is a pretty... That is like the definition of a perfect family. Right there. I know it's fine with like that, but we're just... Hello! Niall, Dorothy, what are you two doing here? Obviously, getting some pictures taken for Arnold made for that spring of wildfire with the lecture. And then I heard something weird beyond the happening. So I stopped by to check out what's up. Something weird? You mean this white shadow people have been reporting? Actually, while you were out, we had another report of the hearing in the city limits. The citizenry is starting to get frightened and demand answers that I can't give them. Ah, hell, this is really becoming a problem. And the capstone to it all? picture this young lady This one pretty much puts the nail in the coffin as to what's going on, so to speak. A picture? You mean... What, so you're into ghost hunting now? It's nothing like that, really. I was just taking pictures of the hotel at night and scabooch, ghost picture. Here, take a look. Oh, huh. Yeah, I'd, uh, call this decisive. <laughs> Come on, guys! Don't you think this is a bit too hasty? It might just be, um, about function of the camera. Yeah. No, I don't think it's the camera's fault. It's a shiny brand new model from the Central Factory, and I've been taking really good care of it. It's a malfunction, okay? Malfunction. What, well, Estelle, you're scary all of a sudden. Anyway, I'm willing to put a lot more faith in these sightings now. It seems something really is out there. More to the point, I think working with the media on this wouldn't be a bad idea to show. Let's all share information. To start with, did you guys get saved from the witnesses? Um, yeah, we checked in with all their... Oh, crap! Oh, crap! This is an emergency! Help! Hey, what's wrong? Why are you so worked up? Is it a robbery? No, no. The supporters of Norman and Portos are arguing. They're facing one another down on the Lightning Bridge. All that fuss over an argument? Hold up, those are the mayoral candidates, right? Friggin'. Oh, ho, this sounds like an article, and maybe a riot. Dorothy, we're on. Aye, aye, sir. See you later, Estelle. Man, they're fast. We should get moving, too. That thing turns into a damn riot. We need to be on hand. Right. Thanks, you two. Good luck. You aren't fooling anyone. 
We know that you're behind the ghost of the Pierce Hotel. Norman Sutton is bedridden from a shock. Have you no shame? What disgusting tricks won't you stick to? Oh, please, that son is a member of the Ravens. How do you expect us to trust something a worthless thug says? Wait a moment. Criticize me as you wish, but only a coward would attack my family. You will retract your state statement calling my son a thug. I mean, he's part of a gang of thugs. He's a thug. Uh, that was probably a little much there. But, but sir, why are you agreeing? It's because you bend on issues like this that the tourism party dares to try such tactics. Who's daring to try things? The harbor party is the one crossing the line. Do you really think you're harassing with the ghost trip will really stop us? Yikes, this is really getting out of hand. You think we should step in? They ain't throwing punches yet. Stay in stay. Get into a good position, though. If it really does get real, we need to be ready to jump right in. Yeah, but uh, there's so many spectators, we can't get any closer. I'd like to dial Lance up front already. I can't take this anymore! Do you limp-wristed tourist suckers think you can beat us in a straight fight? Oh, that's it! Let's do this! The employees of the Norman firm will uphold Mr. Norman's honor. Stop! All of you, do not sink to the level of thuggery. Everyone, calm down. We should discuss this rationally. Oh, crap. Son of a... Don't think we can stop them now. Ah, oh, crap. My goodness, what a tragedy Tragedy in the making. What the hell out of here, Olivier? Violence creates nothing. It only opens empty chasms between men. To you, I offer this song. A gentle, sad song to encourage you to overcome that which divides your hearts and join hands as one. I'm not going to sing this. I'm just going to let it happen. Ah, it seems you were all touched by my song. Remember, there's but one truth. Love is eternal. Ahem. <laughs> well, Portos, I think it would be a good idea for both of us to fill our heads a bit. Yes, I agree. Besides, we're, uh, obstructed traffic, yes. Back to the harbor, everyone. Yeah! Right, I've got flyers to distribute. And the fleeing begins. Ah, uh, but the citizens here are as easily stirred to the action and as any road. Now, what truly, no, what truly moves them is the practice the power of my melody. You there, reporters, take photos and write articles your hearts content over the stage where Oh, okay, here we go. Say cheese. Mm, marvelous. Alright. You guys still in the mood to talk about the stuff you mentioned before? Yeah, sure. I feel like I'll forget it if we don't report it soon. Back to the guild house and report to John ASAP. Hmm. Oh, Estelle, to where are you going? Wait, no, please wait. Oh, what a great expression. How heartbroken. It's so cute. Got him. How fitful can you be, my rose? To meet your fated partner again after such a long absence and then to abandon him? What cruel barbs you cast. Ha! Faded partner of my left, Strega. What in God's name are you doing in Ruan anyway, Olivier? Are you supposed to be turning into a prune in almost hot springs? Mueller contacted me at the Maple Leaf Inn, you see. 
was kind of telling me that you returned from your travel, from your travails. Yeah, travails. Estelle. And I thought to myself, she has been deprived of my person for so long. Her happiness is imperiled. I must welcome her back. And flew here post haste. It certainly feels imperiled now. Still, I haven't seen you since the Queen's birthday celebrations. Thanks for your help back there, Olivier. It is nice to see you here. Truly? Ah, but honestly, it makes it difficult for me to stay focused. When you don't take the opening to make a joke at my expense, it leaves me wanting something more. Let's see you deliver another line like that through broken teeth! Whatever. John, this thing is Olivier. One of the people who helped us during the coup. He's a musician from Erebonia, I think. Ah, nice to meet you. You seem like an interesting person. So I'm guessing you don't mind if we let him in on this then? Normally I'd want to kick him out on his butt for being an outsider. I doubt he'd even listen though. Just try not to make eye contact. Maybe he'll go. Haha, <laughs> oh Agate. Truly, you are intimately acquainted with my ways. Hey, stop trying to apply things. We've never even talked much. We just fought on the same side for a little while. Anyway, going beyond that. Yes, that sounds like a very good idea. Seriously, we have a story to talk about here. We don't have all day either. Dorothy and I need to get the scoop on the election. Right, right, I get it. So, this is what the witnesses had to say. So relate the witnesses' testimonies and Kevin's analysis of the situation. I see, you managed to gather a lot of detailed information. It's enough to see that something is definitely up, at least. Really? I thought a lot of it was kind of vague. Well, the possibility of it being a prank from mayoral candidates to cause problems for the other is out. Scaring Norman's kid is one thing, but I kind of doubt they'd waste time scaring guards in Orphan. Also, whatever this ghost is, it can fly. That was consistent across every report. That's not something Joe Average can pull off. Well then, it must be a real ghost. Maybe some ancient noble and crazy and lock, was locked up in a lonely cell and forced to wear a mask forever. And then, after hundreds of years, he revived as a spooky ghoul. Please stop talking about such scary ideas with a happy face, thanks. Besides, ghosts are supposed to be bound to people or places, so it really can't be a ghost, can it? Hmm, not necessarily. What do you mean, Olivier? You notice something? Well, I cannot weigh in on the matter of our future's ghostliness. However, as Sal's report featured several common points. From what she said, I think it's actually quite possible our specter is bound to a place or person. Oh, you're sharper than I thought. I was about to say the same thing, actually. <laughs> indeed. As a wandering hunter of love, I must keep a map of the world handy at all times. Let us see. Let us use my map to look at Estelle's sites from geographical. Now then, Estelle, you investigated three areas. Here, here, and here. Yes. That's right. The one warehouse district, the airline checkpoint, and Mercia Orphan. What about them? If we look over the testimonies for differences, one particular point stands out. Estelle, I don't suppose you see it yourself now, looking at the map. The point that is obviously different from the testimonies. Wait, that'd be. I've got it. It's where the ghost went that matters. Precisely. Raven feathered tough man in the city's southern blocks that in the northeast. Our air Latin guardsmen sent him north. And our young orphan sent the white shadow went east. What? <laughs> now I get it. Never would have figured. That's pretty conclusive, yeah. When you look at it like that, not many other places it can come from, really. Exactly that point. Genesis Royal Academy. It must be. Olivia, you're pretty clever. Okay, I don't care if it's a ghost or whatever. We're gonna go to the academy and find out just what it is. Ha, John, it's cool, yeah? Absolutely, I'll phone ahead. Go on over and investigate. See if you can get to the bottom of all this. I do have to wonder if our reporter friends have the plans. We really can't afford to cut out on the election. Okay, Dorothy, I'll leave this in your hands. Yes, sir. I'll do some real ghost hunting. I'll get tons of pictures. No, help solve the damn mystery. Follow Estelle and take pictures relating to the ghost of this ghost. Oh, okay. 
I don't really get it, but I'll do my best. Uh, hey, we didn't actually agree to this part. Now, now, they didn't get us that photograph, so let's help them out in return, okay? Right, fine, the camera goes up too. Ugh, oh, it kind of feels like this will eat away at any seriousness this situation might have had. Still, Dorothy probably can't help us out, so... That settled it, I'm counting on you guys. If you look, excuse me, I have a couple of mayoral candidates in here. Oh, before that, though, no, Estelle? Your dad told me a little bit about the Joshua thing. Not a lot, but enough for me to get the picture. I know you're worried about, uh, those people. If I hear anything that might be related, I'll forward it to the guild. Well, um... So, uh, yeah, keep a stiff upper lip or uh, something. Anyway, gotta go. Oh, man, Niles is really a double point. Nile. Aw, oh, Niles and Paris. It was really a big shock when you heard about it all from Cassius, I think. I think he's really been looking for a way to help himself. Really? Oh, if only he could be a little more honest, it'd be sweet. I'll make sure to contact the guild, too, if I take any more needle photographs of weird people. So, let's still fight on. Yeah! Off to the Royal Academy. Like I said, I'll call ahead and let them know to let you in. Good luck, guys. I'm counting on you. I don't even know why I'm bothering Nash at this point, but I suppose you want to come along to Olivier. <laughs> oh, my dear Estelle, you may as well ask if fish swim or birds fly. Why, after all, do you think I abandoned the warm, moist embrace of Nelmo to come here? Figures. Agate, what do you think? You should come with us? Whatever, I don't care that much. Let's get one thing straight, though. I don't really trust you, pal. You do anything straight, and I'll wreck you. Clear? Ugh, such hostility, such negativity. What a pity. Sometimes a wild type like you isn't bad either, you know? What? Ah, uh, but fear not. I shall refrain from pouring my affection into your untamed vessel after I earned your trust. Screw it! How about I wreck you right now, then? Whoa! Something feels really adult here. It's exciting. Oh boy, time to start locking your door at night, Agate. <laughs> do, 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 do. And give him some fire. Oh. Aggravated. So, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna go 
because of what I read in the side quest guide, I need to take Dorothy to the top of the Sapphire Tower to have her take a picture and get maximum points from it. But I forgot to come here and talk to the actual freaking person who wants that picture. Well then, for my next question, Ken, you are part of the Taurus Promotion Package, right? What kind of plans do you have to integrate the Taurus Ministry? I wish you wouldn't say Taurus and Promotion Package like that. Sounds like I've done nothing else on my mind but Taurus. Something is specifically on the tower. It's that feral tower, huh? That old ruin just off the Orient Causeway, right? Bingo, figured you'd know about it. What do you want a photo of the tower for? Is it for an editorial, maybe? No, no, not at all. I was dispatched from by the History Museum of the Capitol. This task is for research purposes. Ah, so it is, it's academic and it's an academic investigation. Bingo again. I'll admit, this isn't exactly a run of the mill research, though. Run of the mill? Let's worry about that later. First, let's go over the details of the job. Oh, sorry, got a bit sidetracked. <laughs> Here, how much have I said so far? You lost the time at the top of the tower and photograph something. We just need to know what that something is. Okay, so there's these mysterious objects on the roof of the towers. We know they're ancient artifacts of some kind, but outside of that, we got nothing. Not much else to go on. The only thing we researchers can conclude is that they're devices of some kind. Actually, I might have an idea what you're talking about. Like weird pedestals, right? Oh, so you know about them? Bingo, bingo, bingo! They look exactly like pedestals. Oh, cool. Then, yeah, I've seen them around before. Those things have been emanating some kind of strange light lately, too. So, we noticed. The museum's received a report that come from a reputable source. Huh, interesting. So, that's why you want to set this out so quickly. Exactly. Anyway, we need to record the current state of the device. Talk about spooky. We don't suspect it poses any danger for now. You never know. You can't say for sure. Anything could happen, so be very careful. Of course, I've got no intention of letting my guard down. Just double check. You only need a photograph of the device in question, right? Yep, please bring the photograph straight to me. I'm going to lend you a camera, but I'll need you to return it once you're back. Alright, I'm counting on you. Receive the whole camera. This is pretty clunky. Sure is. It's a top-class model used for archive photographs, after all. Huh, so it's a good camera? Yes, indeed. She's, she's a very honest, good girl. Good girl. Oh, by the way, I've already set the photo for it. All you need to do is snap the shutter. Yeah, got it. Okay, one more time. And go to the top of the Sapphire Tower, take a picture of the device on the roof, then return here with the photo and return the camera. Talk about the size of it? Perfect. And one more thing. No need for fancy or tricky angles. A simple composition for the photo is best. This is for research purposes only, so just try to get the most head-on shot that you can. Okay, keep it simple. No problem. Can't wait to see the photo. Stay safe up there. Alright, now... Does this place is 
no freaking semblance of a map even after I've already been here.
for a rematch. Huh? Are you 
moving up. What's wrong? Not really. I just realized I don't need to take the picture. Makes me coincidence, but we do have a pro of sorts anyway with us. Ah, I see. Do you mind? If I ask Dorothy, I mean, nah, go ahead. If you don't think you can do it, no shame in asking. So, Dorothy, would you mind taking the picture? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'll give it my all and stuff. <laughs> Thanks. Here's the camera. Okay, here we go. Ah, it's got a scary face. Well, say cheese. Thanks for waiting. I got some really angry, sullen, manly pictures. Um, I see. Good job, Dorothy. Thanks. Looks like we're done then. All right, let's get back to town. Ain't no point in sticking around this one, right? Going back already? Yeah, that was the plan. They were found just now. Not really a problem, I guess. It's just came all this way, so I didn't check back with me a ways to the state. Hey, got an instant to the tower. Ah, screw it. If you want to poke around, not me. Well, no, we shouldn't. Settling up this job is going to come first, sadly. Great, that's how it works. Let's get back to town. Let us away, then. Yeah! Oh man, how absolutely freaking generous. How super duper generous. Since I already explored the tower, I need to uh, do it again. Hey guys, welcome back. Did you take the photo? Sure did. First, I'm gonna turn your camera. Turn the old camera. Thanks. Now it's off we go. Er, what? Where are we going? The Orbital Factory, of course. We've got to develop the photo course if you want to see the picture. <laughs> true. I'm right behind you. Ooh, all done here. Yeah, thanks. Tell us, how'd the photo turn out? Uh, well, this is a shot. It's good enough to look like it came from a pro. Actually, it's better than most professional. Wow! Is it that well done? Here, take a look. Whoa. Whoa, that is really nice. Yeah, you really match the focus on panorama mode, which is really difficult. Man, the way it captures the light is just perfect. You tell just by looking at this that the device has a long history. Of course, a photo of this good is plenty for research purposes, but it almost feels like a waste to use it for that. Oh, really? Pretty complex, huh? <laughs> it's incredible. Well then, our job's done. Right. Thank you all so much for all you've done. Climbing all the way up the tower must have been exhausting. Well, it was kind of rough, but it's all part of the job. Don't worry about it. Ha <laughs> ha Thanks, hearing you say that makes me feel better. Oh right, here, it's not much, but please take this. It's a piece of equipment I picked up with the research funds for this expedition. I'm sure it'll be useful if you have to venture into dangerous places. Thanks. Since your offering, we'll accept it. Thanks. Appreciate it. No, no, it's not all that much. Anyway, I feel pardoned. Thanks again for your work. Good luck with your investigation. I'm kind of curious too, honestly. <laughs> it's going to be quite a piece of homework, certainly. Well, I will do my best to look your expectations. Well, see you guys later. Yeah, later. Playing Trails to the Sky, second chapter. Until next time, everybody.